Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to our Chromaticraft tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to continue to look at more of the abilities you can get from the Ritual Altar. In the last episode, we looked at some abilities that buff your survivability, and now we're going to look at some more cool abilities that give you uh, varying effects. So let's go right ahead. So if we open our Chromic Lexicon and go down to the abilities, uh, so far we've gotten through uh, we've gotten through Health Boost. So now we're going to take a look at Bolt of Power. So we click on it. It talks about from the, the Greek deity Zeus to a malicious shrouded man harnessing lightning. I, I don't actually know who this one is referring to. So if you guys know, uh, I'd like to know. Let me know uh, what this is referring to if you think you get the reference because I don't know that reference. Um, so this is obviously the, the Bolt of Lightning ability. Now we're going to go a bit away from our, our, our things. Uh, that we don't want to destroy. So, if we come over here, we've got this ability right here. Um, so, if we hit space on it, uh, lightning bolt strikes where we're looking at. Pretty straightforward uh, with that. Lights things on fire, of course, but it does have a charge level. You can go up to two, so let's try one. And that makes a hole in the ground. So at charge level 0, you'll light fires, but you don't actually destroy blocks. At charge level 1, you destroy some blocks. Let's see what 2 does. Oh, the goodness. <laughs> that was awesome. Okay, so charge level 2 not only makes a much larger hole, but it, it throws the blocks. That's so cool. We actually threw a... Uh, that's... Ha! <laughs> we actually managed to throw a grass block on top of this pylon. Look at that. It landed right there. That's really cool. So yeah, be careful with the lightning bolt. <laughs> that was awesome. So that's bolt of power. Again, because it, it casts immediately, you've got to, you know, go into your abilities, scroll over to it, and, uh, and hit it right, you know, right away with what you're looking at. And you can't change your what, what you're looking at while you're in this menu, so you've got to aim it pretty darn uh, like pretty darn accurately would be difficult to do what are these squids doing I feel like it would be quite difficult to do uh, if, against moving targets come on oh it won't let me do it I can't target the water was I just looking too far away let's see no, you can strike it from pretty far. I guess it didn't want me to cast it on the water for some reason. I don't know. That's what it seems like it was telling me, but maybe maybe it's something else. Uh, let's 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 see. Let's try and let's try and do it right here. So no, it's not going to let me ca uh, cast it on the water, which is interesting. All right, so that's bolt of power. You can cause lightning to strike the ground and at quite a range. Actually, let's see if we can do it like all the way over here. Yes, that's got a very long range. So you can, uh, if there's somebody that you don't like, you can uh, you can uh, blast them from a very long distance. Let's see if we can hit this pig. As if you can tell, I'm having a lot of fun. Oh, and it turned into a pig man. That's right. When lightning strikes certain mobs, it it has an effect on them. So by using this, you can get that effect, which means that we should be able to supercharge a creeper. Let's spawn one. So we should be able to supercharge this creeper. Yeah. We supercharge. We make. We can. Okay. So with bolts of power, you can make supercharged creepers. I know supercharged creepers are a rare. Although he burned to death because of the fire, but they're a rare thing to happen naturally. But with bolts of power, you can do it. That's awesome. So that's really cool. Another use for bolts of power, sending supercharged creepers at your enemy. All right, that was fun. That was a lot. That was a lot of fun. It was, it was as much fun as I thought um, shooting the ground, uh, causing lightning to strike, would be. So next, we have an ability called regeneration. Now, this don't. Let's make sure that we understand what this does. This does not mean health regeneration. Okay, so this has to do with dying. So when you die, of course, you lose your items unless you have uh, item lost on death turned off. You can respawn 
but you lose your lumen energy. Okay, so by default, if you die, you lose all the lumen energy that you have stored on your person, which can be really annoying, right? You also lose your abilities. So let me explain. Or I can explain this. So right now I'm in creative mode, so obviously I can use all these abilities, but in survival, of course, you need to use the ritual altar, stand on it, you know, to get that ability. And you've seen me do this a couple of times where I stand on the altar, I float up ab above it, it has to charge with, from the Lumen network, I float around, and then I get uh, it activates the ability. If you die, you have to do that again and get all your abilities back because you lose them all. So you'd have to go back on the table and give yourself all those abilities back over again, which costs a lot of Lumen energy from your network and could be really annoying because it could take a while. Well, quite a while because that animation is not uh, quick. It does take a while. So regeneration is an ability that allows you to um, avoid that. So if we go here and activate it, it's active now on the right side. So what this does is if you have it active, see on the, on the right hand side, when you die at the moment of your death, it, it'll, it'll, uh, you won't lose all of your lumen energy. You can still lose some of it, um, a certain amount of it, but you're not going to lose all of it as well as your abilities. You might lose some of the abilities, but you're not going to lose all the abilities. I'm really low on Lumen Energy right now. Right? So, um, so we can go ahead and test this. I'll just, like, fly really high up in the sky and go into survival mode and fall to my death. So, we'll just go to survival mode and we'll fall to our death. Died. Respawn. Okay, so we respawn here on top of our uh, casting uh, casting complex for some reason. Go over here, and the ability is still active. You see that? The ability is still active. I can go get my manipulator back, and you can see... Well, actually seem to have... Oh, no. I don't have... Okay, here's another uh, interesting uh, thing. So, I don't have... If you look at the pie slices, you might come to the conclusion that I actually gained energy. Not true. If you look at my cap, it's gone down significantly. So my cap for energy used to be in the like 200 and something thousand. Now it's down to 7,299. So my cap for energy maximum went down. So it makes the pie pieces look larger. Now Reika told me something interesting about this ability. It gets better the more the times you die with it active. So the first couple times that you die with this active, you might not, uh, it might not seem to have done anything. You might think, oh, I, it didn't work. I lost everything anyway, but it's not true. It gets better, actually. So the more that you die with this active, maybe your death attunement increases. I don't know if you're going to come up with a reasoning for it, but uh, you get uh, it gets better. Um, you start to retain more of your power and more of your abilities, uh, which is kind of neat. He says it's specifically designed for people who die a lot. Uh, if we look at this, the cap has now gone down quite a lot to 619. Uh, I've still got a lot of my energy, though. However... If we go ahead and turn this ability off, see now I've lost all my abilities. I don't, I don't have them anymore. If we turn this ability off, go back into creative mode, which still hasn't given me my abilities back. I think I need to uh, open up debug mode once to give myself all of them. If we turn that off and die, now we lose everything. So before you noticed with it on. We were keeping our energy, not all of it, but we were keeping our energy. But now that we died with it off, we don't have any energy, see? It's completely empty, the pie chart. So that's the difference there. With regeneration active, you uh, you do lose some, but you retain uh, a nice chunk of it. And you'll notice I've lost regeneration, see? When I died with it active, I kept regeneration. But now that I died with it off, I lose it. So there you go. So that's regeneration. So you wouldn't want to keep it on all the time, I don't think, because it's, it uses power constantly. But I would imagine it does anyway. Most abilities have a, a, a cost for turning them on and then a cost over time. But if you're going into a dangerous situation, like a caving or into a dungeon, turning on regeneration definitely help you to avoid losing all of your energy and avoid losing your very useful abilities that it'll take you a while to um, give back to yourself. So. Now I need to get these abilities back, and, uh, and I'll be right back. Alright, so in hindsight, I probably should have tested uh, regeneration last, but I got the abilities back, 
Uh, thanks to Reika for telling me a com the command I needed to use to do it. There we go. All the abilities are back. But yeah, that's what regeneration does. Helps to protect you uh, from losing all your stuff. Uh, keeps you from losing abilities. And uh, it, it, it uh, causes you to lose a lot less of your... Uh, well, to keep some of your energy. And gets better as you die more. <laughs> it's just kind of funny. So next we're going to move on to Shockwave. So if we go down and we check out the next one. We can find Shockwave right here. Uh, having found yourself in a multi-mob brawl, more times than you care to count, you're reflecting the relative difficulty of avoiding getting hurt when being attacked from all sides. Better approach should be to repel them somehow. Alright, so we are going to go ahead and test this. It sounds pretty straightforward to me. I wonder if it works on neutral mobs as well. Anyway, we're going to spawn a whole bunch of pigs. And then activate Shockwave. Goodbye, pigs! That was pretty cool. So the pigs died. Some of them did. I think because they got thrown up into the air and they died on their way, on their fall. But I don't think it actually does damage. It just throws them away. They took, they take fall damage, obviously. It also makes a cool sound effect. Let's listen to that again. And a cool particle effect. I like it. So that's Shockwave. Just, if you're surrounded by mobs, just really quickly act... Oh, that's the wrong one. It'd be cool if you could put these on like a hot, a hot bar. And just fire that off, and that will uh, repel the mobs away from you. You can see it knocked them back uh, a nice distance. Get this pig, kind of line him up so that he's facing that way. Hello, pig. Goodbye. Ah, oh, and he died. So there you go. That's shockwave. Definitely more effective if you're uh, out in an open area. If you're down in a cave, it's probably not going to be all that effective. They're going to hit the walls. They're not going to get thrown very far away. On the other hand, if you're at the top of a chasm and you throw the mobs down the chasm with it, that could be pretty fun. But yeah, it just it does what it says. It creates a shockwave around you. It throws mobs away uh, from you. Pretty straightforward and pretty useful. Let's move on. So the last one we're going to cover in this episode is called Breadcrumb. So Breadcrumb looks like this. The icon is a little arrow like this. It talks about how caves are not fun. Um, because you get lost a lot. So... Breadcrumb is an ability that helps you to avoid getting lost. That's the point. So basically, if we go in here and we go over to, to Breadcrumb, which is right over here. So here it is. It's got 12 different charge levels. Um, this is an ability that you really want to charge up. If I use it at no charge, you can see there's this tiny little blue dot right here. And it just follows me around. And it's basically of no use at all. It's just a little dot following me. It's like, how is this going to help me out? Well, it, I don't think it really it isn't. This little, this no, zero charge on this ability do, makes it essentially useless. But as you go up in charge, if we uh, go up a couple of times, maybe to three, you, you'll be able to see that what we're doing is we're leaving a trail behind ourselves, but the trail decays. So at uh, rank three, the trail is longer because these dots are sticking around, but it's still decaying so quickly that we're basically, it's basically just a little trail following us and it's not really going to help us out uh, very much at all. Come on, stop it. So we turn it back off. Go over there and give it some more charts, like maybe six. See, now you can see a bit more what this ability is actually doing. It's leaving a trail behind, behind us, a trail that you can see through blocks. See that? You can see it through stuff and letting you know where you've been, but it decays. It's kind of like Snake. The, uh, the back of the end of it uh, keeps moving towards you because they keep decaying. The higher you charge this, the longer these things last, so the longer the trail is able to get, and the further back on your path you're able to actually see. Um, so if we go ahead and turn this off and crank the charge up all the way. No, nope, not that one. We crank the charge all the way up to 12. What we're going to find is that this trail is going to last for quite a long time. We're able to walk away from it very far. And it sticks around. You can see that the, the color changes. It looks like they the dots become uh, bluer, darker blue, the, uh, the longer that they're around. And presumably, they'll darken to a specific color of blue before they start to disappear. But we can see that this uh, trail has been around for quite a long time now. Not The first dot hasn't even decayed yet. Unlike the last ones where it was decaying quite quickly. Now this is based on time, 
not distance. So if you activate breadcrumb and you travel a far distance, um, you're going to get a lot of use out of it. If you if you if you move really slowly and you and you let your trail decay behind you, it's not going to be as useful. But as you can see, that trail is still there. So I could trace this entire thing back by following it, the dots from brightest to not so brightest. I could follow the trail all the way, and it's going to leave an overlapping trail because it basically just traces behind you wherever you go. And I could follow it back, and I could get back to where I started. And this initial trail has not even started to decay yet. So you can see uh, the huge improvement that, that this ability gets as you uh, increase your charge level of it. You're going to need four different, you know, lumen types. You're going to need Glazio and Asvesti and Argia and Nilla. And it's going to drain it the whole time it's active. But we're leaving a lot of particles. We're leaving a lot, of, a big trail. We'd be able to follow this quite a long ways. So if you don't have that cave mapper thing, if you don't have the the item that does this, well, it doesn't do this. It does, oh darn it! Where's my book? Man, I lost my book. We don't have the. Uh, if you don't have that item, you know, it's like a it's like the wand that you put down a point and you can follow it through the cave. No, that's like the sub the the cave finder. I don't know. I got I gotta see what it's called. Where is it? So I don't sound like a complete idiot where is it I know what I'm looking for there it is the subterranean wrap finder um, if you don't have that this ability I mean this ability is useful for more than just caves obviously anywhere you are you're at this ability is going to um, get you allow you to trace back your path that you took the subterranean route finder is going to find a path back to the surface if you're underground this ability can work anywhere right so that that dot is still there this is not going away anytime soon however it will decay eventually at no level ah i had no idea that hole was there at no level is this permanent okay so it's never going to stick around forever but as you can see it's sticking around for a long time now every once in a while it leaves it seems to leave like an extra bright dot on the ground. Um, I don't know. I think that's intended that it leaves an extra bright dot. I think Reka mentioned something about that. Like there's one over here. It's like super bright compared to the other ones. But yeah, that's that's breadcrumb. So it's going to leave all these particles that you can then follow. Let's make it nighttime. As you can see, the particles just as visible at night, more visible at night, really, because they're they're so bright. Um, yeah, that's very useful. We can see that the trail uh, is getting a is, is turning a darker blue. Uh, the you know the, see, I don't know if that's time or the more dots we leave, the the bluer that the the trail gets, so that you can always tell which part of the trail is more recent. So if your trail overlaps a lot, you can tell by the color which one is. Uh, was more recent. Here's an extra bright dot right here. So yeah, that's breadcrumb. It's made quite a very, a, quite an interesting light show here for us. But yeah, that'll allow you to um, always know where you've been as long as you give it enough charge. Uh, you don't have to give it level 12 to get to this point. If you give it a let 10, 11, 9, wherever, whatever works for you. But you're gonna have to charge it up at least a decent amount in order to get a really useful ability because if you don't give it any charge that dot is just following you and dying and it's not going to really do you any good. Um, there's no other functionality Reka uh, established, it's just this, these dots, but they're quite useful. So anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, these abilities are quite useful, especially regeneration if you're uh, doing a lot of dangerous stuff a lot. Um, stay tuned for future episodes, like and comment the video if you did enjoy it. I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.